A phlebotomist is drawing blood from a patient with severe burns covering both arms. Which of the following is the most appropriate alternative collection site? A. Back of the hand using a winged infusion set. B. The ankle, since it offers large veins. C. The neck, using jugular access. D. The femoral artery with physician approval. Answer, B. Although veins in the hand or foot may be considered, drawing from the ankle or foot requires physician approval and is acceptable when upper extremity access is compromised due to burns. During a venipuncture, a phlebotomist notices the patient becoming pale and sweaty, then losing consciousness. What is the first action the phlebotomist should take? A. Continue the draw to complete the test. B. Remove the needle immediately and assist the patient to lie flat. C. Call 911 without removing the needle. D. Splash water on the patient to revive them. Answer, A. Patient safety comes first. When a patient faints, the needle must be removed immediately, and the phlebotomist should prevent injury while monitoring the patient's condition. Which of the following errors is most likely to occur if a blood specimen for coagulation studies is underfilled in the collection tube? A. Inaccurate clotting time results. B. Sample hemolysis. C. Contamination with EDTA. D. Increased hematocrit levels. Answer, D. An underfilled light blue top tube affects the blood to additive ratio, leading to prolonged or inaccurate clotting time readings due to excess citrate. A blood sample needs to be tested for serum potassium. Which of the following tubes should the phlebotomist avoid to prevent falsely elevated results? A. Red top. B. Green top. C. Lavender top. D. Gold top. Answer, C. The lavender top tube contains EDTA, which binds potassium and can lead to falsely elevated potassium levels in serum testing. A phlebotomist collecting blood cultures must follow a specific protocol to prevent contamination. Which of the following steps is most essential before needle insertion? A. Mixing the blood culture bottle. B. Cleaning the site with alcohol and allowing it to air dry. C. Scrubbing the venipuncture site with chlorhexidine for at least 30 seconds. D. Filling the anaerobic bottle first. Answer, D. The use of chlorhexidine is critical for decontaminating the site and reducing false positives. This must be done properly before inserting the needle. When transporting blood specimens to an off-site lab during winter, how can the phlebotomist protect the samples from temperature-related damage? A. Pack them in ice. B. Keep them near a car heater. C. Place them in insulated containers. D. Refrigerate them before transport. Answer, C. Blood specimens should be kept at stable temperatures using insulated transport containers, especially in extreme weather conditions. A patient complains of shooting pain during needle insertion. What should the phlebotomist suspect as the likely cause? A. Hitting a valve. B. Piercing a nerve. C. Rolling veins. D. Collapse of the vein. Answer, A. Shooting pain may indicate nerve involvement. The phlebotomist should stop the draw immediately and document the incident. Which of the following actions would most likely result in hemoconcentration during a venipuncture procedure? A. Using a tourniquet for more than one minute. B. Not cleansing the site properly. C. Using a large gauge needle. D. Drawing from a sclerotic vein. Answer, D. Prolonged tourniquet application causes plasma to leak into tissues, concentrating cellular elements in the blood sample. For which patient condition would capillary collection be contraindicated? A. Anemia. B. Edematous fingers. C. Severe dehydration. D. Neonatal jaundice. Answer, B. Swollen tissue, edema, may dilute capillary blood samples, leading to inaccurate test results. If a phlebotomist receives a request to collect a fasting blood glucose sample and the patient has eaten, what is the correct next step? A. Collect the sample anyway. B. Wait two hours and then collect. C. Reschedule and document the patient was non-fasting. 
D. Ask the patient to lie about their fasting status. Answer, C. Non-fasting glucose readings may produce inaccurate results. It's essential to follow protocol and reschedule if needed. What is the primary purpose of using a discard tube before collecting a coagulation sample from a butterfly needle? A. To test the needle's patency. B. To ensure the vacuum is intact. C. To eliminate air in the tubing. D. To prevent tissue contamination. Answer, C. Air in the tubing may affect the sample volume, especially in light blue top tubes for coagulation studies. Which additive interferes most with calcium testing if used inappropriately? A. Heparin. B. Citrate. C. EDTA. D. Thrombin. Answer, D. EDTA binds calcium and can falsely lower calcium levels in blood samples. Which of the following samples require strict time tracking from collection to testing due to its short stability window? A. Glucose. B. Ammonia. C. Creatinine. D. Cholesterol. Answer, B. Ammonia levels change rapidly after collection, and samples must be transported on ice and tested quickly. When is the best time to label a blood collection tube? A. Before the draw. B. During the draw. C. Immediately after the draw, in front of the patient. D. When placing it on the lab tray. Answer, A. Tubes must be labeled after the draw but in the presence of the patient to avoid identification errors. If a patient refuses a blood draw after giving verbal consent, the phlebotomist should. A. Proceed with the draw to avoid delay. B. Ask a coworker to restrain the patient. C. Respect the patient's wishes and document the refusal. D. Call security. Answer, D. Patients have the right to refuse. The phlebotomist must respect this and document it appropriately. Which action below would likely lead to erroneous results in a blood alcohol test collection? A. Using a non-alcohol antiseptic to clean the site. B. Collecting the sample in a gray top tube. C. Drawing from a vein with visible scarring. D. Cleaning the site with an alcohol pad before collection. Answer, A. Using an alcohol pad before collecting for a blood alcohol test can contaminate the sample and produce false results. A non-alcohol antiseptic like chlorhexidine should be used instead. What is the main purpose of inverting tubes containing additives after collection? A. To mix blood cells evenly for accurate clotting. B. To activate the vacuum for additional draws. C. To prevent clot formation or ensure proper mixing with anticoagulants. D. To cool the sample and preserve stability. Answer, D. Inverting the tube ensures the blood mixes with additives such as anticoagulants, preventing clotting or preserving sample integrity depending on the test. Which of the following would most likely cause a falsely elevated white blood cell, WBC, count? A. Shaking the tube vigorously after collection. B. Using a tourniquet for under 60 seconds. C. Collecting a fasting sample. D. Using a needle too small. Answer, C. Shaking causes hemolysis, which may interfere with cell counts. However, leukocytosis, elevated WBC, can result from stress or contamination, not proper technique. Why is it important to collect blood culture specimens from two different sites? A. To satisfy insurance billing policies. B. To compare results across time zones. C. To confirm or rule out contamination by skin flora. D. To ensure better mixing in the culture bottles. Answer, A. Drawing from two sites ensures any growth detected is not due to skin flora contamination and provides a more accurate diagnosis of bacteremia. When drawing blood from a patient with a PICC line or central venous catheter, what should the phlebotomist do? A. Always draw from the opposite arm. B. Ask the patient to use the line themselves. C. Contact nursing staff and never attempt collection independently. D. Proceed as normal but use a smaller needle. Answer, D. 
PICC lines should only be accessed by specially trained personnel, e.g., nurses. Phlebotomists should never draw from a line unless permitted and trained. Which of the following situations requires immediate discontinuation of a venipuncture procedure? A. Slight bruising near the puncture site. B. The patient states they feel faint and are sweating. C. Slow blood flow into the tube. D. Mild tingling in the arm. Answer. B. Fainting or presyncope symptoms demand that the procedure be stopped immediately to avoid patient injury. What is the correct order of draw when using a multi-tube collection for coagulation, CBC, and glucose testing? A. Lavender, light blue, gray. B. Light blue, lavender, gray. C. Gray, lavender, light blue. D. Lavender, gray, light blue. Answer, A. The correct order of draw is, light blue, coagulation, lavender, CBC, and gray, glucose with antiglycolytic additive. This avoids cross-contamination of additives. What can occur if a tourniquet is applied too tightly or left on too long? A. Increased accuracy in analyte measurement. B. Hemoconcentration leading to false elevations in analytes. C. Decreased blood flow, causing erroneous pulse readings. D. Lower blood cell counts. Answer, B. Prolonged tourniquet use causes hemoconcentration, where cells and large molecules become concentrated, affecting test results. A patient with Parkinson's disease exhibits tremors during venipuncture. What should the phlebotomist do? A. Ignore the tremors and proceed. B. Use a hand vein and secure the arm appropriately. C. Ask the patient to hold their arm still. D. Postpone the draw until tremors subside. Answer, C. Tremors can complicate venipuncture. Using a more stable site, securing the arm gently, and working with assistance may be necessary. Which of the following best describes the consequence of drawing blood above and for site without proper technique? A. Increased risk of hemoconcentration. B. Elevated glucose and potassium results. C. Hemolysis due to vacuum pressure. D. Contamination with 4 fluid, leading to inaccurate test results. Answer, A. Blood drawn above and 4 site may be diluted with 4 fluids, compromising sample integrity and test accuracy.